We are in an era of individualization, and I think that's a difficult thing. Young people today absolutely have to learn to be cooperative. And the quicker they do so, the better it'll be for future society. The fundamental aim is to have children leave the school strengthened by it. Confident, they're able to think and deal with difficult situations by employing the various strategies they've learned. Participation, that is, giving children co-determination so they can change the world or their environment, and themselves in turn, the experiencing of this is a basis for their being able to confidently assume social tasks in the future. We try to create various possibilities to integrate self-management and social interaction into lessons. One example is the grade committee, which the children themselves run and in which they must track the time, with alternating roles that they themselves have to adopt. They also teach other children. This has been thoroughly studied in reciprocal teaching literature and it has been shown to be extremely effective. I take a ball. I have here a blue one. If you have to stand at the front as a pupil, you reconsider how you've reached the solution. And then again, children learn completely different approaches, ones I might never have thought of myself. Yes, because you really learn more than if you're just doing worksheets, and it's completely different for them to get explanations from us rather than from teachers. This is the fine fur, and here's the rough, thick stuff. It's actually put together the same way a human gets dressed. The fine fur is like a jumper for him, and the rough fur is like a rain jacket. Because we speak a similar language, we know better what we didn't understand. For a teacher, it's easy or logical, because the teacher already understands it. If I explain something to somebody, I have to have understood it very well first. We don't want everyone to always be fussing around. Then there's a small feedback round. The younger children tell the older ones how it went. This is what I understood. This is what you did. This is what you could maybe change or improve. You didn't understand my fuss. I found the game really cool, actually. I didn't want to make you sad. We had planned for a time frame and couldn't keep to it. Some people found that not so cool. But it was totally sweet that Moritz apologized at the end. I found that really brave of him. That's one of the central aspects of what we're doing here. Letting these children show completely different competencies in their new roles. And that they can guide children, treat other children with empathy, they're a lot less successful at this in their peer groups. I always have a child from the top grade, Jon, come along with me. And he works one-on-one -on -one with Zilvan and accompanies him. He develops his own exercises and is naturally a lot closer to the boy. He's quicker in finding out what he can ask of Zilvan and what will be too much for him. Zilvan is absolutely delighted to have his own teacher. And for Jon, it's his chance of taking on another role and becoming very grown up.
In my old school, it was all grinding your way through the material. It didn't matter if you got a bad mark as long as you finished it all. And here it's like, what could you improve so that you learn more easily? It's more constructive and also a better way of relating to the teachers. School is one of the most important prerequisites for personal development and also for career development. And a good environment gives you security. If the children don't encounter us as models, personified learning models, they'll never have fun learning anything. That's why, for example, it's important we film ourselves and watch the videos together, so as to give each other feedback on how we help support their processes, the children's metacognitive learning processes. You mean help by helping her ask questions? It'd be very interesting to return our attention to how she motivates herself. Then we pose specific questions about a given sequence in order to better grasp and develop our own actions, so as to become better in dealing with children. We expect children to improve after feedback, and we expect that from ourselves as well. For us, the prize is an incredible gift. We never counted on anything like this, and we are naturally very grateful. We're going to invest the majority of the prize in accompanying research. We would like to scientifically evaluate correlations between social interaction and self-management. Then there are another couple of projects that are important to us. One child, for example, proposed having a new subject introduced at school. At school, you learn a lot of mathematical and linguistic things and some general knowledge, but not really how to deal with life. And I thought coping with life should really be introduced as a school subject. Questions like, how will it be for me if my parents separate? Everything that goes to make up human relations, that would really be like preaching to the choir. In line with the research prize winner's findings, namely that puberty is a very sensitive stage in emotional and social learning, I must say the school self-management project is really on the right track. Someone who knows him or herself well and can both self-manage and manage others will definitely be better equipped to make his or her way through life. <laughs>